So I've got an example. x squared plus 6x plus 1 equals negative 7. If you remember back to class, we've got this idea of a zero product property. Don't want the highlighter. The zero product property. Which says if you have two things equal to zero, you can set each piece equal to zero. That only works if you have equal zero. So before I can do any factoring in any method is to move over if you have a number on the right side of the equal sign. So I'm going to move over negative 7, which means add 7 to both sides. My problem will become x squared plus 6x plus 8 equals 0. Now that I have 0, I can go to factoring. Now I said the slide and divide really only is necessary when you have a number in front. So in this case, I don't have any number in front of the x squared. I can go right to my factors. So because I didn't slide anything, there is no need to divide. What I'm looking for is two numbers that multiply to c in my case multiply to 8 and add to 6 or b. So I want to multiply to 8 and add to 6. Okay, so my factors of 8 or my um, numbers that multiply to give me 8 are 1 and 8, 2 and 4, that's it. There's no 3 and then I start going 4 and 2, 8 and 1. There's no need to rewrite them with the order just reversed. I'm looking for 2, remember, that will add to 6. So of these two, 1 and 8 and 2 and 4, 2 and 4 are the only ones that will add to 8. So I've got 2 and 4, x and x, because I also have to multiply to x squared. The only way to multiply to x squared to split it up is x and x. Now let's look at my signs. I want to multiply to a positive number and then add to a positive number. So the only way to do that is positive, positive. Check these. You check by FOIL. So um, let's work over here. x plus 2, x plus 4. This is my check. FOIL says first x times x gives me x squared. Outer 4 times 2, or 4 times x, which is 4x. Inner 2 times x. And last 2 times 4 gives me 8. Combine up my like terms. Get 6x plus 8 which if you notice, 6x plus 8 is the same thing as my question, 6x plus 8. So I know my factors are correct. Now that I've got that confirmed, I'm going to do my zero product property, which says take each piece and set it equal to zero. And then solve, minus 2, minus 2, x equals negative 2 is one of my answers and minus 4 minus 4 x equals negative 4 is my other answer so I have two solutions to x squared plus 6x plus 1 equals negative 7 I have x equals negative 2 and x equals negative 4 in Hawks you would put those two with a comma between them so my next example, 15 equals x plus 6 times x minus 8. If that was a 0 on the left-hand side, I could go straight to the zero product property. However, that says equals 15, 
not zero. So I can't do anything until I have equal zero. Well, that means I need to get this thing all expanded out and then I can move that 15 over. Well, the way I expand is I foil. So I'm gonna do x times x gives me x squared. x times negative eight gives me negative eight x. Six times x plus six x. And then six times negative eight gives me negative 48. And I'm gonna go ahead and move that 15 to the other side. Now, it doesn't matter which way I move the 15, just as long as I keep everything on the same side. Order doesn't matter over the equality sign. So I'm going to combine up like terms. That gives me 2x. And then negative 48 minus 15, because I'm going to move the negative 15, gives me negative 63. And those cancel and give me zero. Now I am set up nicely to go through and factor. So again, I don't have an A in front, which is great. So I'm going to look for all my factors of 63. I want two numbers that multiply to negative 63, which tells me one negative, one positive and then add to negative two. So I always start with 63 and one, because that's the easy one. Now I'm gonna find 63 and something else. Well, three and 21. So now I'm looking for four. No four, what about a five? No five, what about a six? No six, skip down to nine and get seven and nine. Now those two are a difference of two, so I know those are gonna be um, my numbers that I pick. However, I need to figure out which one's positive and which one's negative. When you have opposite signs like this, the bigger number takes the sign of B. So I'll have negative nine, positive seven. X and X. Got two things being multiplied to zero, so I can use my zero product property. I'm going to get x equals 9 because I add 9 to both sides, subtract 7, and get x equals negative 7. So in Hawks, I would do 9 comma negative 7. So the method that I'm going to be doing um, to factor this trinomial is the AC method, or the tutoring center calls it rainbow. These are the same thing just depends on who you're talking to. So if you went to the tutoring center workshops, um, this is the method that you were shown. If you want to do rainbow or AC method, the reason I know to do it is because I see a number in front of x squared. There's not a number in front of x squared. You can just go right to the parentheses and do guess and check, if you will. So rainbow says you still have to have equal to zero on this side. You can't do any factoring method unless you have equal to zero. So I'm gonna subtract eight, subtract eight, and get two x squared minus 13 x. 29 minus eight gives me positive 21 equals zero. Now, um, on the left-hand side, I've got a trinomial. On the right-hand side, I've got zero. So I am ready to factor. Again, I'm going to use AC method or rainbow because this x squared has a number in front of it. So rainbow says you take A and you slide it down to C, but just in your head. You don't actually move anything around. So you do 2 times 21, which is going to give you... 42. Now that's the number that you're going to keep in your head to look for things that get you to add or subtract to B, negative 13. So my factors, I've got 1 and 42, 2 and 21. I'm going to find all my factors of 42, 3 and 14, 
and then I keep going through all of them until I get to six and seven, and then they start to repeat. So because 42, or because C is positive, right there, because C is positive, I know that both of my um, signs in my factors are going to be the same. I know that I'm going to have both negative signs. Now, in rainbow, you just insert these things into the original equation. So I have 2x squared, and I said they would both be negative, negative 6x minus 7x plus 21 equals 0. So I didn't change the value of anything because I took that 13 and I split it up into negative 6 and negative 7. So I haven't changed the value, I've just rewritten negative 13 as negative 6x and negative 7. Now with rainbow, you're going to do factor by grouping. So I group up the first two, group up the second two. Well, the first two, 2x squared and negative 6x, have a 2x in common. When I factor out a 2x, I'm left with x minus 3. Have to carry that sign down, so negative. 7 and 21 have a 7 in common, which is going to leave me with x minus 3. The reason that sign changed from positive 21 to negative 3 is because I factored out this negative sign. Now factor by grouping works because these things repeat. So I'm going to write down the repeat, x minus 3, and then write down the leftover, 2x minus 7. The leftover is what happens when you take out this x minus 3 and this x minus 3. I'm left with 2x minus 7, which is, goes right there. So I have now factored that with rainbow method. But because we're in chapter 6.6, .6, I am solving by factoring. So I'm going to carry down that equals 0. And now I just set each piece equal to 0 because the zero product property says if you have two parentheses being multiplied to 0, you can set each individual parenthesis equal to 0. So I've got 2x minus 3, which gives me x equals 3, and 2x minus 7 equals 0. Add 7, add 7, I've got 2x equals 7 x equals 7 over 2. So my two answers are